in my head there's always a little man saying run 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 but if you are in the race you just be as efficient as possible that's different to short course in short course you run as fast as you can so Annie uh, welcome to Rotterdam and um, it's an unusual journey to become Ironman world champion and then decide to do the shortest of short course races. That's just almost the reverse of what everybody else does. What, what's your thinking of wanting to, to do some short racing again? It's, I mean, it's not a, it's a hidden secret that my heart will always be in the short course and I'm always fascinated from the speed. So I was never fascinated from the distance. I'm always fascinated by the speed and going back, it's like a flashback for me. And I really feel honored to line up with these superstars again. And yeah, I mean, I know that I'm not in the shape like in earlier days and you can't turn back time, but I can give my very best and see what I'm up to today. And um, I'm very excited and I'm very happy and I'm very honored as well to line up today. I guess uh, it would be remiss not to start by asking you about Kona and your, your world championship victory there. I mean, can, can you talk through that day and just how special that achievement was for you? It was actually really a, a special for me because my preparation was everything else and perfect because I was injured almost half a year before that. I couldn't run for half a year and I managed to qualify on the last possibility in, in um, Copenhagen. And um, yeah, so my preparation was just uh, not existent to be honest. And yeah, and on that day, everything comes together. And I think in, in Ironman it's, half is mentally and half is physically and if you mentally prepare to just give it all on that day and fight for every place and trying to make the finish line <laughs> in the fastest way possible then everything is, is is possible to be honest and on that day i had almost the perfect day and my dreams come true so it's really special for me has it changed your life um, of course, my life is getting quite busy. I mean, it's it's a big deal to get to win a race and to get third because the year before I got third and no one really was interested in that. But winning this race is something really special. And I think the combination was quite special with Jan and uh, as a German and I was the first female German, he did the record. We have both the same coaches. So it was a good story around that, um, that win. And yeah, the media interest was just crazy. But for me personally, I'm still the same. I'm still hungry for, for being better and improve myself. So personally, it hasn't changed me, but obviously uh, the attention got really big. And you were a bit of a latecomer to triathlon, weren't you? Now, nowadays we see uh, kids going through the federation systems from a very young age being scouted, but, but you didn't start till a lot later. Yeah, I think it's completely unusual and I think you can't make it nowadays because the swim is just, especially I'm talking um, short course, it's so strong. You, always, you need to have a swim background to have a chance to compete on the highest level because if you don't make the first pack on the bike, you can run world record on the 10K and it wouldn't change anything. So it was, yeah, in, in my days where I was good at short course, I think the bike courses were much more challenging. So I could always ride myself on the pack and not always, but in the times I was good. And nowadays, yeah, the, it's a young sport and it's always improving and the depth of really good athletes get more and more. So yeah, you need to have a swim background to be good. Were you always sporty as a child? Were your, were your parents sporty? Did they encourage, encourage that? And what, and what did you, if you weren't doing triathlon, what, what were you doing? I mean, I grew up in a very sporty family. My, my dad was a sports teacher, so I was riding my bike in the age of three and I, I skied when I was three and we were always a very active family. My, my dad always wanted me to like try out every kind of sport. So I started with tennis in the age of five and then yeah, I did gymnastic, um, beach volleyball, volleyball, play judo, uh, whatever. I did almost everything, every kind of winter sports. And he always wanted to, me to get a big range of every kind of movement and don't decide too early for something specific so yeah if I wouldn't do triathlon I don't know maybe tennis again I really love tennis so uh, maybe that's this one are you yeah. good do you still play 
no, I don't have time to play and I think my coach would kill me if I would play tennis. <laughs> no. Stuff on the ankles. Yeah, yeah, and it's just with one hand you like, you got like imbalance, so no, no. Mm. Did you feel like you always wanted to be a professional sports person and you were you were trying these to maybe search for, for the one thing that you would excel at or, or were you just literally, it was enjoyment and triathlon happened? Just, I, just think, by coincidence? I think, I think, I really loved sports because I was always good at it. It always comes easy to me in every sport without swimming. Every other sport came very easy to me. So my dad always told me I was always super ambitious. I always wanted to win as a child and I was always like giving it all. And I think it's, it's part of my character. And But it didn't plan, I mean, to get a professional because I, I never knew I had the chance to because I w got never pushed by my parents or whatever. I just did sport because I was good in it and I had fun. And I always watched the Olympic Games and I thought, oh, that's a dream of every, and, but I will never do it. But yeah, by the time I got better and I trained regularly at the age of 20, when I met my coach, then the dream like of growing. <laughs> and then I realized that maybe I can get better. And then, yeah, it developed to something like getting a professional. Yeah, I haven't planned it. So that, that sounds like it, it, there's less one moment, but if you no. could, it, it, was there a moment when you suddenly thought at some stage maybe you were racing, oh okay, I've, I've kind of made it now, I am a proper professional, uh, I am really competing at a high level now. I mean the problem always was in short course that I'd always missed the first pack, I knew inside me if I would make the first pack I could run to the very best and I could win a race. but. I don't know how to make it in the shit first pack and that was my problem and after 2012 I was so frustrated having um, made my first uh, WTS series and I was always like last out of the water and then I was always a good runner and then I said okay I have to change something really dramatically and I called Darren Smith and said I want to be on your squad and he said okay come over in two weeks it starts in two weeks and I packed all my stuff left everything and and moved to Australia not sure when I come back and that was kind of a breakthrough for me because then I was able to train with the very best and I think on short course it's very very important to see every day where is the elite athletes to compare with them and then you suddenly um, go closer to them and, and maybe close the gap and that was really kind of a breakthrough for me from because from then on I qualified for the Olympic Games and whatever yeah uh, on, a, on a personal emotional level was that was that difficult to just go right I'm going to Australia and, and was it difficult for your family as well when you just like right I'm going that's it I'm going I want to do this I think normally I don't have this confidence in life I'm always self-doubting but that was I knew that was the absolute right decision. I was so convinced. I, I didn't have any second thought about that because I knew that was the best squad in the world. This environment will make me the best I can possibly be. I mean, there's always a risk. You never know if you got world class or not. It's always a very high risk. And I was willing to take that risk because I thought that's my chance. That's my one and only lifetime chance. And I, yeah, I said to my boyfriend, <laughs> okay, I go, I'm going and I don't know when I come back, but I have to do it. And, I, and my family was very supporting because I had a, I finished my studying, I was 27. So, I mean, I had like a security in the back. So the risk was not super high, but yeah, I wanted to make the move and I was absolutely convinced. You said that you've always been self-doubting, maybe lacked a bit of confidence there. Is that still the case, even with the success you've had now? Yeah, of course. I mean, the success doesn't help because you always want to improve yourself and you always want to get better. And that's kind of a thing you're always questioning yourself. I mean, if you're so super happy with everything you're doing, there's no reason to, to improve yourself. And I think it's always good to questioning yourself in every race and, and before every race and every day because I still want to get better and I think there's room to improve and that's the reason why I'm always self-doubting and always searching for for ways to improve. And I guess that the, the probably the, the beauty and the frustration of triathlon with having the multiple disciplines is that there's always something. There's always, yeah. You're always working for striving for one more thing all the time. I think if you start being happy with with your performance and it's 
then you finished your career because that's the end of improving and you should always be like unhappy with your performance because then you always get driven to get better. And you mentioned your qualification there, I believe it's sport, a sports science qualification. Do you think that's helped you? Has it helped you understand more in your career about, about how to train and how to look after yourself? For sure, I have a background, but I would never trust myself as a coach. So I'm very, very happy to be with Dan because I think I would kill myself. It's always good to have someone looking from the outside to your performance and be neutral and like just see the facts. And um, yeah, I would never be able to coach myself. And for sure, it's, it's, it's good to have this background, but I don't use it, to be honest. I completely trust my, my coach and, and my, my team, and yeah, I'm very happy for that. That's, do, do you see that as a common mistake that a lot of triathletes make, that, that they don't have that outside knowledge? Because there's a, there's a barrier you can put up when you're training, isn't there, that I, kind of, I know how I feel, I know what I'm capable of doing, and you just stay in your own bubble, and perhaps you either don't push yourself or you push yourself to breaking point. I don't know because I mean you're not neutral when you train when it comes to train yourself you always want to push and, and break limits and I, to be honest that's what high performance sport is you try to move barriers and um, sometimes you have to go overboard to see that there is the barrier otherwise you wouldn't do high performance sports and it doesn't keep you from from yeah, getting injured or whatever just because you have a science background because you always push as much as you can and sometimes you have to go overboard a bit. I'm interested in the, the fact that you, you really like tennis because there's, there's a bit of a parallel there in that we're now seeing the longevity of players. You look at Serena Williams and Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal who are pushing the limits in that sport of what you can do at what age. Yeah. Um, do you feel there's parallels there with triathlon and, and do you see that as something that's inspirational for you and that you, you could carry on doing this for a long time yet? For sure, but I think it's not a f matter which kind of sports you do. I think it's a matter of what kind of character and mentality you have. And I think these um, people you mention are always very driven people. They are people who always believe they can do better and they're always willing to work on an everyday basis. And I think that's the reason why they last so long in their sport because they continually push and be willing to, to torture themselves every day because it's self-torturing every day. And I think most people at a certain age, they don't want to torture themselves as much. So that you say, okay, in that age, you can't perform anymore because the average of people don't want to push that hard anymore. But if you're still willing, and if you still feel inside you can do better, then there's no age barrier or whatever. So I think Elliot Kipchoge is way over 40 and he's by far the fastest marathon runner. So there is no age limit. It's just a limit in your head when you don't want to push yourself anymore. When you said you achieved your dream, really, by, by winning Kona, what's it like after that and, and the motivation, once you've achieved your dream, to, to kind of really have the motivation and the fire to keep going and, and want more? Now that's really strange because, I mean, I have that my whole career, I always set myself a goal and in the beginning it was I wanted to race second division in triathlon. It was my biggest goal and then I achieved it and I thought I would have this satisfaction in me and would say, okay, I reached my goal, now I'm done. But it didn't change me, so another dream grew and the next step was I wanted to race European Cup, then I achieved it. Then I wasn't, get, didn't get the satisfaction either and then it goes further and further and then I wanted to go World Cup, I want to go to the Olympics and I never ever get the satisfaction and it's the same with Kona win. I thought if I would win the biggest race in Ironman, I would finally have the self-happiness and satisfaction, but it never comes and I think it's why I'm still going because I still think there's more to come. And I mean, it's not in my hands if I win it again, but it's in my hands to get a better performance out of me and I think there must be a better performance inside me because I'm doing Ironman for just two years, so it can't be the end of my yeah, improvement. So I want to go on the start line again and, and show a better performance. And if I'm lucky enough, I can win it again. If not, I have a better performance and I'm happy with that. That's a real sign of some serious motivation to say that you, the race you won, uh, I could do better. 
what, what did you what do you feel like that when you've won a race like that and you look back what do you feel like you could do better because most people would say you won it's the perfect race no you can always push harder on the bike you can always run faster and to be a little bit better in the swim would be good as well because yeah there's always room to improve i mean ironman races race around eight hours 40 and there's so much um, things didn't happen perfectly so there are always bits and pieces improving and especially on the bike you, you can yeah push harder <laughs> i hope so can, can, is it is it then possible to ever find perfection do you think no happiness? or will there always be that's the beauty in sports you're always aiming for perfection but you never you will never reach it but that's the thing which is driving you because you're aiming for that perfection also you know you will never achieve it uh, you're running as well. I mean, to, to not come from a traditional running background and be able to run like you can. Where is that born from? Is that is it natural? Have you always been a fast runner? I think so because I mean, I, when I was young, I never got to athletic club or whatever. I did tennis or whatever, and we had to run around the court for warming up. And I always felt, oh my God, why are everyone so slow? I mean, it was comes really natural to me, so I never thought about it. I never had a technique trainer or whatever. It was just natural, yeah. And I guess to to, to take that running speed from short course and transferring it into long course, how what did you do to to kind of bridge that gap? Yeah, to be honest, I always think I haven't really transferred it to long course because the speed on long course is so much slower than the speed on, on short course. So um, short course and half Ironman is quite similar. So the speed is pretty much the same. And But then from the half Ironman to Ironman, it's a big step because you're just working out for six hours already and you're so super tired that you just survive on the marathon. So. Um, but I must say my run um, training hasn't really changed from short course. I'm still doing the really fast stuff because, I mean, my Dan knows me quite well. I always want to run fast. I mean, that's my passion. I want to run fast. I don't want to run long. I want to run fast and I always want to be fast. And I think nowadays you need to have this quick background to be a good Ironman athlete as well. It's like in running. If you don't have a, a good under distance speed, you will never be a good marathon runner. So it's the same in, in triathlon. You need the speed. So with your run training, is it is it much more focused on speed than, than kind of building a, any kind of endurance base? Then? And then you just rely on, on the fact you've done so much training when you start? To be honest, I think I run much harder and longer hard than I did in short course um, times. And I'm very injury prone in, in running, so I, I can't do much mileage. So I, when I run really much a week, I run 80 Ks a week and most of the athletes would laugh about me. But I think we have other disciplines where we can get our endurance. So I go on the bike and I get my endurance and I have long swims where I get my endurance from and I just do the key sessions in the run, the things I have to do to get better. But I don't go out just for the sake of running and yeah, because my, my body is just not made for that. Yeah. I think I might cry when you answer this question, but did, given the, the speed that you ran when you won the Ironman World Championship and in the conditions of Kona, the, the brutal heat and humidity that we all know exists there, you, you don't sound like you felt like you ran as fast as you should have done. I ran as fast as I could, but I, in my head there's always a little man saying, run, 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 but if you're in the race, you just be as efficient as possible. That's different to short course. In short course, you run as fast as you can. Uh, and in, 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 in Ironman, you have to run as efficient as possible and don't make any mistakes. And so that you, it's a feeling, if you come from short course, you always think you hold back and you have to hold back because you can't just sprint out because it's just too long. But I always, that's what's driving me is that I think it must be possible to run faster and that's my motivation and um, maybe I can squeeze out one or two minutes or even more, I don't know, but it, it depends on the, on the race, yeah, it's not predictable. And you've mentioned your coach Dan several times, I know he, he also coaches Gianfredino. Um, 
When did you start working with him and what's your relationship with him like? Because it sounds like you place a lot of faith into, into him and his, his methods. Yeah, Dan. I mean, Dan is the most important person in my career. I met him in university when we were students together. And yeah, we actually met in a triathlon course in, in, in university. And he saw me and he said, oh my God, what are you doing? I, I, um, I coach you a bit and, and see what we can do. And then history started. So at the age of 22 or 23, he, start co he started coaching me. And even through the phase, I, I switched to Darren Smith for the two years. It wasn't because I was unhappy with his training. It was just I didn't have the training environment. I was on my own in Munich, and I didn't have any like uh, training partner, whatever. That was the reason why I, I changed to, to Darren Smith. And he was always with me at that time as well. And in 2030, I came back. So he, he's coaching me for um, 14, 15 years. And it's really, really special for me. And he knows me the very best. He knows everything in my career, every injury. And he always knew to improve me. I mean. I never ever stand on a start line where I knew I'm not prepared for that. He always managed it and yeah, I have my, all my confidence is with him. Sounds like a, a very special relationship. It is. But it, 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 I imagine most athletes go through a whole career and never find that. Yeah, definitely. And it's very special because he went through me through that. Um, yeah, bad patches as well as to really um, high patches in my career. So yeah, it's, it's very special, yeah. You sound like somebody who uh, is very much all in with triathlon, it's, it's everything. Is there any, for you, triathlon life balance or is it all triathlon? It's, to be honest, all, all triathlon, but I think it's my char character. I mean, I'm, I think I'm a very boring person. I mean, I love to be in my room, to eat, train and sleep and do nothing else than that because I think doing high performance sport is just such a short, time in your career and you have to do it 200% to make it proper and especially in sport you never know when it's over because you, you might have an accident tomorrow and it's over and I had a lot of really really serious injuries in my career where all the doctors said okay your career is over and I always believed I can get back I can back, get back and and so the older I get the more special it for me to still compete and I want to use it. I don't want to waste any time, any second, not doing my very best because it's maybe over tomorrow. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. But, but the other thing I would say is if you're all in, do you ever allow yourself to, to think about the future with, without triathlon? The day that the bad injury happens or or you just you just realise that you can't compete at the level that you want to compete anymore. And if you if you've had maybe twenty years of doing this, does it scare you? It always scares me a bit, especially if I injured. I I I have these doubts, but I I try I always try to listen to my inner inner yeah, voice. If I have if this inner voice is still coming and saying to me, you can do it again, you can do it again, it's possible. I can imagine racing on a high, high performance again. Then I will do everything in my hand possible to get back. But if I don't have this feel, this voice inside me anymore, or if I'm not confident, can I compete on the highest level, then I think it would be the end of my career. But at the moment I don't have it and um, I don't have plans for future either because I didn't plan to be a professional athlete. It came to me, it was a door which was opening to me and I just ran through it. And I hope when I finish my career in triathlon, another door will open and I'm as passionate about that as I am with triathlon. And I think you always have to have one plan to follow them because you have a lot of other plans. You got distracted and you can't follow your path. And that's my way. And if that way is over, another way will come. So. And just before we wrap up, I'd like to ask you a bit, having gone through so much of the development of triathlon, professional triathlon, um, where do you see the future of the sport going? And there's obviously a lot of different things talk about the, the shorter stuff, Super League for example is obviously trying to change things in the short course game. Where do you, where do you see the future of triathlon going? You never know. I think at the <laughs> nowadays you would think there's maybe a um, online stuff developing, a virtual racing series developing, so you never know. I mean, it depends on the conditions as well. But 
I think um, it's a new sport, so the, um, the athletes will get better and better and better, and the training um, science behind that will get better and better. And um, yeah, I think we will see better performances, and the swim will get better, the bike will get stronger. Because the material changed as well, I mean, not so much on the short course, but in Ironman, I mean, the bikes get better and better and better, and the time's like going up again. So, um, yeah, you never know, but it definitely get faster. And if you enjoy uh, short course racing, Super League, you're obviously very focused on Ironman. Is there any chance you'd be tempted to go back for one more crack at the Olympics or WTS or Super League on a more regular basis? or? Do you feel like that, that area of your career has largely, largely gone or, or could, could you be tempted? I'm always tempted because I'm always so fascinated from the speed. I love to go fast and I love the um, competition, direct competition, racing against someone. But the little voice inside me said, my swim is just not strong enough. I have to be realistic because if I want to, I don't want to compete just for the sake of competing. I want to compete because I want to be the best I can be and um, yeah, I want to reach a certain level and especially if you already reached so much in your career, you always think everything which is worse than a podium is not good enough and I knew I can't do it anymore and that's that my motivation is not so high. Yeah, that's, I, I, I'm really tempted and I, because it was always, I never achieved in my career to make the first pack in the swim and I was trying for so many years to make it. I tried really everything to make that and to overcome my fear in the open water because it's the most thing which was hindering me to, to swim faster because of my fear in the open water and my panic attacks in the open water. And, but I think I can't overcome. I have to be realistic and I think I can't. And that's the reason why I moved on to Ironman course because then it's a little bit more relaxed in the swimming. The crowd is not so dense. You have to straight a long way until the first buoy. So the, the, the field is kind of spread out already. So it's not so much fighting and punching in the water. But I'm really tempted to go short course. <laughs> do, you, do you ever allow yourself, even amongst your motivation, uh, which is very clear, just a moment to reflect when we were talking about the little girl who went skiing and played tennis with, with her dad to think, wow, this is what I've done and what I've achieved and how special it is. In very short moments, but to be honest, that's the reason why I'm here, because I knew I can't compete on the highest level here. But sometimes I reflect and say, or oh, I mean, when I was 18, I dreamed of being a, a triathlete and now I've achieved so much in my career. And now I allow myself to, to compete here because I want to embrace racing again and I want to maybe show how good the short course athletes really are because most people think oh you are Ironman world champion you will kill everyone in the race but maybe it's my my thing to say hey look I'm an Ironman athlete and I, I can't keep up with them they are just so super fast and I think the older I get the more relaxed I get about that so I allow myself to race here or so I knew I, I can't win this race and normally I would never sign up for something like that but this race I mean I follow Super League since it started so I'm really fascinated from it but yeah to be, now I'm, I'm just honored to be here and to race and show the world that you can't buy anything just because you have a world championship title I mean that's really fascinating and yeah.